Can you spot the difference? This forest has been replanted after being mined for bauxite, which is used to create aluminium. So where we're standing is an area of rehabilitation established in 2009. And this is state forest, untouched by mining. When we have a very diverse understory in these forests, it means that we can provide habitat for a, a huge range of different species. Large parts of the world's only Jarrah forest in Western Australia exist on top of a layer of bauxite. The ore is typically found near the surface, which means clearing large areas of land to mine it. US aluminium giant Alcoa has been mining here for six decades under the promise of rehabilitating the land it clears. This is part of Alcoa's 7,000 square kilometer mining lease in WA's Darling Range. The way we alter, essentially the potting mix of life, means that you fundamentally change the capacity of wherever you are mining. Professor Kingsley Dixon is a restoration ecologist. In the past, he supported the company's rehabilitation efforts, but now says the science has evolved. They mined this whole area 15 to 25 years ago. Professor Dixon is the co-author of a new study that measures Alcoa's rehabilitation efforts against an international standard of mine site restoration launched at the 2022 United Nations Biodiversity Conference. In many cases, we're now getting the strong evidence that there are a whole range of places where mining can't put back that nature. The study published in scientific journal Restoration Ecology indicates Alcoa's restoration efforts are substandard and are on a poor to declining trajectory. It says most plant species are effectively absent and some key animal species were also struggling to return. Our college boss, Matt Reed, disagrees. We've impacted uh, less than 2% of the northern Jarrah forest in the 60-odd uh, years of mining. We've got highly credentialed people within our organisation working on rehabilitation. We engage very actively with the broader science community. Uh, we're confident in the work that we're doing. Alcoa operates under an agreement with the WA government made in the 1960s, which exempts the company from most of the state's environmental laws. Each year, it submits its mining plan to a government committee, and the minister gives final approval. The state agreements, I think uh, most people would agree, have created an enormous amount of value for Western Australia, and they've supported billions of dollars worth of investment. Alcoa has taken us on a supervised tour of one of its rehabilitated mine sites. This is Young Rehabilitation, established in 2022, so it's two years old. And after about 15 years, it becomes something like this. It's like a, a small mid-storey tree called a snotty gobble. Yeah, it's a great name, isn't it? <laughs> you won't forget that one. We've got a diverse understory that is, together with the, the tree layer, providing habitat for a range of native fauna that are, we know are returning to these areas. And uh, through our monitoring and research programs, we're confident that this area is on a trajectory towards full restoration over the longer term. The company has cleared about 280 square kilometres of forest since it started mining and says it has started rehabilitating 75% of that area. We are really focused on making sure that what we rehabilitate or restore is indistinguishable from the forest that's, uh, that's untouched next door. How, how close are you to that full restoration on any of the land? Well, I think there's, there's two ways of really looking at it. There's kind of a, a, technical, uh, a technical process that uh, is about us meeting the completion criteria that are set by government. And then, as I say, there's a, there's a much uh, higher level uh, process, which is, the, which is 
more about that indistinguishable nature of our work compared to the to the forest next door, the rates of of uh, species return, both both flora and fauna. So we we think we've got great examples of uh, of achieving that. A state government spokesperson says no areas have been assessed as meeting the completion criteria to date. It's a sore point for conservation groups that have long argued for these Jarrah forests to be protected from mining. So it's one of the biggest mining operations in the world. Um, we just simply do not have time to wait for the rehabilitation of Jarrah and Mary trees that take more than 100 years to develop nesting hollows. We're seeing population crashes of Bordens and red-tailed black cockatoos and a number of mammal species. They need us to be protecting all of their habitat now. Internal advice from the state's Department of Water and Environmental Regulation found Alcoa's latest mining plan posed a risk to threatened flora, fauna and ecological communities. The plan was approved with conditions on where and how much land Alcoa can clear. There needs to be some places on earth that are off limits to mining and that has to include these incredibly precious northern Jarrah forests. In response to questions to WA's Premier Roger Cook, a spokesperson said the state government is committed to transitioning Alcoa to a contemporary approvals regime to ensure that they meet the expectations of the Western Australian government and community. WA's Environmental Protection Authority announced last December it would undertake a comprehensive assessment of Alcoa's mining operations in the Darling Range. This would typically require a company to stop operating in the area, but the state government has given Alcoa another exemption to continue mining in order, it says, to safeguard jobs. Alcoa employs more than 4,000 people in Western Australia, where it produces about half of the country's alumina. We are producing ultimately a mineral and a metal that is fundamental to decarbonising our economy and our planet. And we're doing it in a way that is creating thousands of jobs for, for Western Australians and Australians. The Environmental Regulation Department's advice recommended Alcoa adhere to the 2022 Rehabilitation Framework, which formed the basis of Dr Dixon's study. And you're getting embryos out? If we can. The removal of the bauxite layer essentially robs that forest of a, the primary material on which the Jarrah forest depends. And we have a contest. We have a contest between a company where bauxite is their primary goal and a Jarrah forest that depends upon the very same material. If their advice is you can't mine in Jarrah Forest because it's impossible to restore them afterwards, what would be your response? Our response to that is that uh, our science doesn't, uh, doesn't support that, uh, that assessment. If that was to change, let's see. <laughs>